Chapter 7, Lesson 7, Simple and Compound Interest. So now what we're going to be dealing with is uh, one of the applications of percent. And the one that's most commonly used, probably by most people, is interest. And that's on credit cards, it's on uh, houses and mortgage payments and things like that. So let's define a few of the terms. Interest is just the amount of uh, money that is earned or paid for to use an amount of money because people don't give money just and loan it for them uh, to someone for and don't get extra back that's that's the idea um, the amount the total amount that is borrowed or deposited or borrowed is called the principal so these are important terms for now interest that is earned or paid only on this this part here the original amount um, only on the principal is called simple interest so if you deposit 50 bucks in the bank every year and it's at 1%, you're going to get the same amount every year. Now, um, the percent of, in, of principal earned or paid per year is the annual interest rate. So if there's an interest rate of 1%, that means 1% per year. The balance is, uh, is the amount in the account after interest has been paid for that amount. And uh, let's see, compound interest we're going to get to in a little bit, but compound interest is, is more complicated because the interest goes back into the account and then the next year you not only get the balance, or you don't not only get the amount from the principal, the interest from the principal, but also the interest on the interest also. So it gets a little bit more complicated, but still. Um, in terms of the, the formula here, you uh, you purchase a bond for four hundred and fifty dollars. The bond earns six point five percent simple annual interest. How much interest will the bond earn after ten years? So I'm going to rewrite this again here. Interest the formula interest is equal to principal times rate times time. So it's just I is equal to P R is equal to P times R times T. And so all we're going to do is we're just going to plug in these values. So what is the uh, principal? We're looking for the amount of interest of interest that a bond will earn after 10 years. So the interest, the first part is, uh, let's see here, the principal, I'm looking for the interest, is going to be equal to the principal, which is 450, times the interest rate, which we're actually going to write as a decimal. So it's going to be 0 0.065. If you wanted to, you could write it as 6.5 and then divide by 100. But you can just write it as a decimal to make it so that that doesn't happen as much. So, And then it's over 10 years. So all you have to do is you just have to multiply those numbers together. So in this case, when you multiply them all together, what you're going to end up with is 2.92.5. That's the amount of dollars that you're going to end up with. And it's the same exact formula for when you plug it in for this one here. A $1,600 bond earns 5.2% simple annual interest. What is the interest earned after three years? So it's just going to be interest is equal to principal times rate times time. Principal times rate times time. So then it's just going to be the interest is equal to, and we just start plugging in the numbers, 1,600 times... Uh, 5.2, so that's going to be 0 0.052, and then times 3 for the amount of years. And when you multiply those together, you get $249.60. You should probably put a zero there and a zero there to indicate that's the amount of dollars and cents. So that's uh, simple interest. Uh, if instead you wanted to find out the annual interest rate in this problem here it says you deposit six hundred dollars into an account that earns the simple interest rate uh, that earns simple interest rate uh, simple annual interest after eighteen months the balance is six hundred forty eight dollars and uh, sixty cents find the annual interest rate now in this case here we're, we could use this formula here which is simply the balance, and this makes, makes logical sense, the balance is equal to the principal, which is going to be the original amount, and then 
uh, the principal, that's what that one is for. Because when you multiply it out, when you distribute it, you're going to say the principal um, is equal to one. And then that's also the principal times the rate times the time. So one way to think about this is the balance is equal to the principal plus the principal times the rate times the time. They just went ahead and separated that out. So if you want, either way you want to think about this, um, if you plug it in, you can go ahead and multiply it out. And we're going to actually use the formula that they have up there. So it makes it a little bit easier. 1 plus R times T. Uh, oh, we'll, we'll see if it makes it easier or not. I think it's easier a different way, but let's see. So this is going to be the balance. What's the balance? It's right there. 648.6. Zero is the balance. The principal is $600. And then that's going to be times 1 and plus R times 18 months. Now, remember, this is always done in, in uh, annual, in amount of years. So when we change 18 months, we have to make a slight adjustment. That's going to be 1.5 years. The way I got that was if ever you have something in months, you're just going to do 18 divided by 12. So if you had uh, 33 months, it would be 33 divided by 12. And so I need you to come up with a, with an actual equivalent for an equivalent decimal, which in that case would be 2.75. In this case here, it's 1.5. So when we do this and we multiply this out, we've got hold on one second here. This part here is going to be 1.5 is going to be the amount of time. So I have then, when I multiply it out, it's going to be $648.60 is equal to 600 plus 1.5 times 6 is actually going to be, let's see here, 1.5, uh, it's going to be 900 R. So I move the 600 to the other side, this part over here, I'm going to end up with 48 60, because I'm going to subtract 600 from both sides, is equal to 900 R. So then I'm just going to divide both sides by 900. And I'm going to end up with, with 0 0.054, which would mean it would be 5.4%. So that's how simple interest rates. And again, I, I this formula is okay. But to me, if you're figuring out the annual interest rate, you'd probably do it a different way where you just go ahead and you'd subtract the principal from the other side. Um, let me show you what I mean quickly. Because um, if you have the balance here, let me show you. You're going to come up with the exact same number here. Here, what I just did was I said, well, the interest is just going to be the uh, here, this amount here, which is the balance. Subtract the original amount. That's going to give you your interest amount. Your interest is here, and now that's equal to principal times rate times time. And then you just multiply that out, and you're going to end up with 900R. And you're going to divide both sides by 900R, and you're going to end up with the same answer. Um, so, again, these sort of things here you can, you can play with and fiddle with and just plug in the formula. This is another example. If you look at this one, if you pause it, you can see what I did. It's still using that same formula, which is the... Uh, account balance is equal to the principal times 1 plus uh, plus interest uh, rate in time. So that's what it's actually doing there. Um, but uh, like I said, I think I prefer to do it the other way that I showed you just a second ago. So let's look at the next problem here. Uh, this is dealing with what's called compound interest, which is a bit compli more complicated formula. Because in compound interest, what happens is every time you get interest, it gets put back into your account, and then the next time around, you have extra money. To, so let's say you have $500 in your account, and then you earn $20 interest. So the next year, you have $520 in your account. The next time, you end up having interest not only in the $500, but also on the extra $20. So it ends up, uh, it ends up accumulating more quickly more quickly. And that's partially because it's, it, this is, deals with exponents here. 
but still is very similar in a lot of ways. So let's let's look at this problem here. This is the formula, um, and it says account is equal to principal. As again, you can see it has that one plus r, but it's to the power of t. So you're going to have to use that exponent button on your calculator. So now we just plug in the numbers. You deposit $2,000 into an account that earns 3.6% interest, compounded annually. Find the balance after five years. So, so the account balance is what we're looking for. The principal is going to be $2,000. And then we still have that one there. The rate as a decimal is going to be 0 0.036. And the time is five. So when we do this, we end up with the account is equal to 2,000 times 1.036 to the fifth power. Now that might not seem like a lot, but let's look and see. So when you multiply it out, it's going to end up, uh, that's the amount that that equals when you, when you use that exponent, and that's going to be two, uh, $2,386 which actually is is significantly larger than if you didn't go ahead and have the interest compounded. If you were to do that, let me just do that problem for you quickly. So I figured it out up here in green. If uh, if you didn't compound the interest annually, you'd get $360. Since you compounded the interest annually, you get $386. So it's a difference of $26. Which might not seem like a big deal, but you know what? Do it over a few more years or at a higher interest rate, and it gets a lot bigger a lot faster. So that's it.